Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, there's some fine looking ladies in the chat tonight. What? <laughs> there's no ladies in the chat. Oh. Welcome to the Late Late Horror Show with Dino and Ted. That's right. What is going on? Welcome to everybody in the chat. Nice to... Yeah. Skalaxon took care of all my issues. Yeah, Ted had a bad back last week, but he's back. I always have a bad back. You always got Yeah, so anybody back. who's confused and thinks I'm in the chat, that's my boy. Yeah, that's not, t- that's not <laughs> hey, Ted in the chat. That's somebody else. But yeah, hey, uh, <laughs> 80s horror fan, thanks for being here. Uh, welcome to Primetime Horror. Uh, the Soul it's- Solus trench coat. <clears throat> what is up, my friend? Haven't seen you in a while. Nice to see you here. Uh, Jake Blaster Production. What's up, boys? Just stopping by to give my support. Appreciate it so much. Uh, jumping in on last trivia night. That was pretty awesome. Welcome to Primetime Horror. What's up, everybody? Um, let's see. The Once and Future Badass Returns. Hello, nurses. Yeah, Hello. Ted is a nurse. Well, thank and he's, you. He's sporting his... Um, Shirt that's just about ready to fall no, off. Oh, this this baby stain. I, I don't know when that shirt's going to end up croaking, but uh, it, it's I'm afraid gotta, to wash it. It's got to be pretty soon, man. But yeah, yeah, we are here to talk. I'll uh, wash it on delicate. Talk about something actually good, even yeah. though a lot of the movies you know we do are good. But um, Day of the Dead, nineteen eighty-five. Uh, George Romero wrote. And directed the this end movie. of the trilogy. End of the trilogy, man. I ignore anything that comes after this. End of the trilogy. And uh, Raiders AK, what is up? What's up, Dino and Ted? Uh, mm. Yeah, this um, this movie is a, it's third on the list of the trilogy. And I think, even though it's a fantastic movie, He's got like I two love trilogies. It. He's got one that's good and one that's not so good. Although there are some good yeah. things in Land of the Dead that were supposed to be in this film. Yeah. Uh, because of budgetary constraints that couldn't put it all in one film. It was going to be described the Gone with the Wind of Zombie Holocaust movies. Gone with the Wind the gone of with the Zombie wind of, of, Movies. Yeah, if it's appropriate to even say Gone with the Wind, that'll probably tag us on YouTube now. Oh, but, please, oh, please. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I mean, this this is probably... Oh, my God, did you see the spit fly out of my oh, mouth? It was originally a 200-page script. If this it almost made this 3D. Thank God I didn't. Um, but this uh, is the third in the series, and, and um, I think it, it's, that's where it belongs. I, Night of Living Dead is still my favorite. Um, mm-hmm. Dawn of the Dead is a close second to the first one because of the whole mall aspect and, and how much I just... You love the mall. I love horror... Ma horror. How about that? It's the thing that's gotten yeah. you down the most about this whole pandemic thing. Just that yeah. you would actually see us at a mall with our families walking around, going in stores, acting stupid. Yeah. And we can't really do that. Or if we do, we have to cover up and it's uncomfortable and yeah. it's just not worth it. I'm waiting for the zombie apocalypse, man. But. Well, I mean, this movie almost parallels what's going on now except this is way 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 worse yeah i'd say so um well, but it's better yeah. in that they don't have to wear masks <laughs> 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 at least they don't have to wear masks. Yeah, no. you know <laughs> the, the funny thing about this movie though ted is um even though out of the three this is the least i, I don't even want to say least likable because i love all three of these movies day of the dead is fantastic but out of Night Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, th- this kind of has a couple of the more iconic uh, scenes or characters uh, out of the three movies. You know, you got There's... Bub, who's who's just do you? I, I mean, who? If you're a horror fan, a zombie uh-huh. fan, Bub is Bub is it. your mascot. It, it's your mascot, man. You know, you know what I mean? He is the zombie. And, and, and there's the, some really memorable ones yeah. in this movie. I mean, it's first time you see one dressed as a clown. There's one walking with a stogie. That is so good. <laughs> Tiger Man, what is up, my friend? Hey, nice to see you in the chat. Yeah, yeah, one's got a stogie. I was wondering, <laughs> how did that cigar stay there's in There's one dressed mouth? up like Michael Jackson from Thriller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, 
I'd buy that for a dollar. Let's see, what am I missing here? For movie night, I watched that. Uh, not that shirt, uh, John says. Uh, he's yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's always going to be there. Dan Breaker, what is up? Day has its perks, but a majority of the film viewers find the other two better. Uh, exactly, but I love the film. I would say so too. I mean, it's third on yeah, my on yeah. my list too, but it was yeah. very maligned when it first came out. Yeah, and it has since. You know, been reevaluated like a lot of movies. Well, it's do. become a cult classic. I mean, how can it not? It's George there was Romero. just a lot going against it at the time. It's not. Uh, it wasn't. You know, I mean, he's not going to rehash the same thing. Right. All of these movies. Yeah. All six of them are very, very different. Yeah, yeah. Tone, of where they take place, what the kind I tell of you social what, message of them are. Right, right. But they're all a little different. You know, it's you know they're George Romero uh, videos, though. That's for sure. Um, the Solus trench coat. Uh, yeah, the Night of the Living Dead franchise confuses me because I don't know what films are part of the franchise and which are not. All the ones that were directed by George Romero are. Yes. Yes. And, so um, you have Night of the Living Dead from 68, then you have The Dawn of the Dead from 78, this film, Day of the Dead in 85, then we had to wait until, when did Land of the Dead come out? It was late 2005. 90s. 2005. Was I it think, that long? I think 2005. Okay, Land, Land of, of the, the Dead, dead. Yeah, yeah. Then, um, then you have Survival of the Dead, which kind of, that did go to theaters because I saw it with my sister. Yeah, I remember seeing it in the um, theater. Yeah, yeah. Survival of the Dead. Yep. Uh, and then... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Diary of the Dead first, then Survival of the Dead. Right, Survival right, right, right. of the Dead, I think, just went to video. Yeah. Diary of the Dead, that's the one that I remember seeing in the theater. I think me and my sister went, or maybe yeah. you were there. I don't remember. But um, We'll be talking a lot about the movie, but I'll, I'll try uh, keeping with the chat as much as possible mm -hmm. and read off what you guys got to say. So those, uh, are the, those are the six, but if you really want the core trilogy, the night, dawn, day, you, you yeah. pretty much got the best. They, they, they do taper off in quality. I mean, even the Land of the Dead, he was given an extraordinary amount of money yeah, compared to what he was used to. Uh, and I found Day of the little, Dead, yeah. I found it a little there, lackluster yeah, yeah. in that, you know, it didn't have the as much of the good practical effects as these. This this film is a masterpiece of, of practical yeah. effects, if you watch the whole oh, yeah. well, thing. Really was, ahead of its time in yeah. a lot of ways. And I was... Speaking uh, about the iconic, out of the three films, the mm -hmm. first three, the original three, uh, the iconic scenes, I mean, Rhodes, Captain Rhodes, you know, towards the end there, when, when they, uh, are you ever going to forget that scene? Ooh. When and those, the story that goes with it when we finally do Yeah, all those it. zombies get to pulling him apart. I mean, mo one of the most iconic zombie scenes, I think, in history, I, I believe, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really up there. And Bub... Uh, one of the most iconic characters, right. I, I do believe. But this is the last And one movie. of the first zombies oh, in any of his films that actually pick up a gun and shoots. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, it is something. But um, gonna, go ahead. You got something to say? I'll oh, I was just going to say, this is the last movie for me that actually feels like a Romero movie. Because Romero was very Pittsburgh-based, very dark, gritty, used a lot of the same, if not actors, the same crew... Um, or a lot of times actors would serve as crew members, um, like on this movie. And uh, after this, they get a little bit more... Excuse me. It's that chili I had for dinner. Oh, God. <laughs> um, they're just a little bit more Stop polished after this. stopping at Wendy's for chili. Chili, man. The chili's good. Um, here, uh, welcome That's all to, I had. Welcome to Primetime Horror. So it's Night of the Living Dead. Cemetery is 15 minutes away, and the mall from Dawn of the Dead is 45 minutes away from me. That is awesome. That I've, is awesome. I've actually Ted circled sister. around the Monroeville Mall. Yeah, yeah. My sister and I went to a... Um, We're in Ohio here. The, um, oh, I can't remember the type of convention it was. A horror convention. It was a horror movie convention, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, met Bill Mosley and... and uh, you, remember, Mo you Mosley talked to him Mo while you were actually, there. Actually, yeah, he was, <laughs> he was the... Mo uh, there was a bunch of people there, you know, like... Oh. People from Kevin Smith movies, Daniel Harris was there, the kid, the kid that played Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie ones that were there. But <laughs> the Monroeville Mall was like right over there, so we just, you know, it was Sunday, it was closed already by the time we got out, but we did kind of drive around it just to say we did that. Yeah, yeah. 
But the cemetery would be even way more bitching, I think. Confused reviews, Luke. What is going on? Choke on it. <laughs> Choke on um, <laughs> uh Let's see, real quick. Uh, Dan Breaker says it's been so hashed and rehashed by critics and viewers alike. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't ask me why, but uh, what you know what? Of, Dawn yeah. of the Dead was huge when it came out. Everybody saw it. It was a huge deal. Everybody yeah. loved it. And this was not Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> How could they be disappointed in it, though? I mean, it was. It didn't. It's very dark. It's very nihilistic. It's very bleak. Whereas, at least, <clears throat> you know, Night of the Living Dead had a couple things you could laugh at a little bit. Yeah. Not many, but yeah. a couple. Dawn of the Dead, it had laughs. I mean, for a movie that was over two a horror movie that was over two hours long, you got some laughs in there to to lighten it up a little bit, um, maybe to feel for the characters a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. This time, you know, it's. Everything's falling apart. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's very bleak, at each other. Very dark. It's yeah, it's, it's and very, it's almost very, ag- now. very aggressive. Yeah, yeah. People being stuck in houses, not yeah. being able to go out like they used to, snapping at everybody, everybody's pissed off. Um, nobody's cooperating. You know, you got like today, you got you got people that wanna wear masks, people that don't want to wear masks, people that want to do this one thing. Yeah, yeah. And one of the characters even says anyway, you know, that's the pro it's actually this part coming up right here, I think, coming up. Yeah. yeah. Um, says, you know, that's the problem with the world, man. That's Everybody's got a different idea. That's the problem about, you know, with the world, man. Of who what was, they expect out of life. And who that character was almost going to be Tony Todd uh, for yeah, the role. Yeah, he auditioned. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, probably but, couldn't do that West Indian accent as good. Yeah. So, but ended up doing the remake of Night of Living Dead soon after. But um, right. Torque, uh, nice to see you in the chat here. Uh, Which isn't bad, by the way. But watch the original first. Uh, Sean Bliss, thanks for stopping by, my friend. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Dino, I'm back. Love this movie. Thank you. Uh, Chili Dino is effed. Uh, let's see. Torque, I've never seen you here before, but thanks for joining. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, says the house by the cemetery, uh, Luci Fulci, mm-hmm. uh, was creepy basement zombie. Heck yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, it was horror. Horror Hound Weekend, I was there. Welcome to Primetime Horror. Oh, really? Okay. Um, confused Reviews, what's up, my boys? I miss y'all, hope all is well, and crazy ass time. That's right, it was a Horror Hound. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I do remember when I was going up to the convention hall room. Thank you all. As soon as the elevator door opened up, can't remember the dude's name, but the guy that played Dante in Clerks just was walking right by. Yeah, and I yeah. felt like yelling out, I'm not even supposed to be here today, but, you know, he probably gets that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah, I would but think so. I will say that Bill Mosley was the most gracious, friendly. Everybody was nice. Yeah. But he would actually he. Um, this is when MySpace was the social media platform, and yeah. my sister and he had talked on MySpace. Right. And when she mentioned her name, you know, he knew her, and you know, we we chatted for a little bit, took pictures with us. You know, he said, if anybody here charges you for a signature, you should just pull out your own knife. And, <laughs> 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 and he had this little, he had this pretty big knife on a belt pocket. You just tell him to sign that signature yeah. right here. He signed everything. That's what you do. Yeah, you know, and, and was really cool. I still have that picture. Um, I'm enjoying the review, guys. Learning a lot of things. The solo stretch coat. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, you will learn more. We always, we go off the beaten trail. We, we joke. We do everything. You know, a lot of times it was early on. Uh, I don't know. The movie's been on for half hour. We hadn't even really talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so anyway, so anyways, I mean, it's a movie that, you know, it got cut. Its budget got cut. Uh, and that know, mostly he, he, is because uh, Romero had a three picture deal with this company. He didn't want to do, nor was he pressured to do a dead movie right away. But one of the conditions of the contract was one of those three movies has to be a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. So what he did is he did Knight Riders, which if you haven't seen or if none of you have seen it, it's a really cool movie. There's I David, know it's David Hasselhoff that no, plays in there. that Knight Riders. Oh. But it is spelled the same. Oh, um, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone plays a cop. That's a oh that's have Nighthawks. You, have you really seen it? That's Nighthawks. Have you, no, I'm joking with you. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. But I'm, I'm passionate oh. about that movie. Yeah, because it's ahead, um, it's about a group of traveling motorcycle rodeo kind of people. Yeah. Uh, motorcycle stunt people, but they live their life based on like the King Arthur legend. Right. Their leader, you know, he has a crown. They have a Merlin. They have a Lancelot, and and that's their names. And they 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 address each other that way. Right. It's it's a weird movie, but it's really cool. And there's some free places to watch it. Then the other one was Creep Show. <laughs> You're like, there's some free places to watch it. Well, and like then Tubi and there's, stuff there's, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then they did Creep Show. Yeah. And then finally he did this epic that was going to be um, 
Day of epic. the Dead. It's going to be epic. Like I said, I mean, it, was, it was originally a 200-page script, and generally the rule is each page of script is a minute of film. Right, right. So, you know, oh, so, some films? There you go. There you go. Some so, film. you know, it would have been a huge film, but the other pictures didn't make a lot of money. Knight Riders did okay. Yeah. Uh, Warner Brothers picked up Creep Show, and they took the lion's share of the money. So there wasn't a whole lot left. And then when George Romero... Rightfully so, said I'm not backing off on the gore. I'm yeah. not, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to cut things out, much like you did with Dawn of the Dead as well. It's yeah. going to be unrated. And when a film is unrated, that means a lot of theaters won't carry it. Right. Um, so it's very limited. So it was limited in its release, limited in the amount of uh, uh, publicity it got. I, I do remember seeing commercials for it on TV. Right. But. Um, you know, I was I was like ten years old, or he just wanted 11, things twelve, whatever. But he had a, a, a way bigger plan for what he mm-hmm. was going to put out. You know, and, and it shows you wouldn't know it if you don't look up on what happened. But right. you know, lots of different things. So he pared you know, it down so. and pared it down to its essence. And per George Romero, he, he's very happy with you know what got put on film and some of the pieces that were left out. He put into. You know, the idea of the, the fenced-in fortress from Land of the Dead and yeah. stuff. You know, but in the original script, there was going to be a trained army of zombies. Um, so, you know, that kind of went to the wayside, and we got, you know, just the one zombie that was being trained. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah that was, I don't know uh, how that would Reckoning been. was a who, thing. Who, who big, knows? The big tank from yeah. Land of the Dead, that was a thing in it. Yeah. And so there was going to be... It basically, it was The military like, people were supposed to be down below, and there was supposed to be a huge... Uh, Right. Facility above where all the scientists were. So basically, on, uh, you're thinking like, if you took Land of the Dead and Day of the Dead and put them together, edited it together as one huge movie, Yeah. that's kind of what was going on. Yeah, ended up with All right, yeah. that was the, the big general idea. Yeah. All right. But I'm pretty happy with the message of Day of the Dead. The, you know, are these the, the last people? You know, are they, you know, they, they make the number 400,000 to one as far as zombies to humans. Um, yeah, reference there. You know, yeah. In Dawn of the Dead, it was still happening. No one knew what was going on. They were still having the, the TV shows. What's going on here? It's happened. They've been overrun. Nobody knows where anybody is. I mean, even at the beginning in, in the Florida streets that are bare, right. the newspaper, you know, it even says, you know, like, you know, whereabouts of president still unknown. Uh, you know, vice president declares state of emergency. Yeah, yeah. Um, nobody knows what's going on. Nobody can communicate with anybody. Um, there was a nice, fresh, clean newspaper still blowing around. That's right. You know, it mu- and it had to have been years later, I would think. The but dead walk. The, I'm, you don't know. You, you don't you know, know I, how much time has passed. I, I tell you what I liked about the beginning of the film. Um, that I, I thought it was kind of funny, but it, it's what you do for movies. You know, it's 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 how you get the entertainment value. I, I, they come with the helicopter. They land. They're looking for. They've been looking Any survivors, for survivors. They, they Survive. land in. What, they've been like hitting the big cities yeah, yeah. on the coast. But but hollering, hello, hello, you know, and and it, it takes that to get all the zombies because they must have gone all into their buildings. Yeah, they don't hear anything. You know, I mean, uh, the, the hearing's not so good. One one thing that I'm like, oh, okay, where are the zombies? Okay, I guess if people aren't around, they're going to go into buildings, sit down and rest or something. I don't like Siestas, yeah. it's hot. It's Florida. It's humid. It's yeah, so you think they're getting hot the out there? I think they're getting hot. Yeah. Yeah. And you even wonder, like, how come they're not deteriorating in the heat and everything? And they yeah, do yeah. address that issue in this film, mm-hmm. that um, the rate of decomposition, once they've been infected, uh, drastically decreases to where, you know, they could last several years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he even says, like, a fresh body right. that's infected could last 10, 12 years. It would take 10, 12 years. To yeah, yeah, the doctor the, does Dr. say Dr. that. Dr. Logan. Dr. Dr. Logan, Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. Dr. Frankenstein, yeah. Uh, the once and future badass returns. What I remember about Day is the speech from the uh, from the black man in the mine scared mm. the hell out of me uh, to this day. So, huh? And it's a very prophetic speech. It's actually Big one of the most army important. Army versus intellectual nerd science yep. scientists. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is when, when he yeah, says, yeah. "What's the good of all this stuff? All these mm. records down here, all this history of mankind." Nobody's going to be around to read it. Who cares? Yep, ends up saying that a little you know, bit later. I, mean, I love that. I mean, it's, you know, he, he's, see, they're the helicopter pilot and the radio specialist. Yeah. McDermott that's... and, uh, oh, what's the other guy's name? Um, John. John, John. Yeah, yeah. He's the West Indian guy. 
That's not his real accent, by the way. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not really a West Indian. <laughs> but he does a great accent. And, you know, they're more, I, I think, just pragmatic. It's, it's you know, we don't agree with they're what they're doing. They're not going to kill me, I guess man. you should say what they're doing. This is a scientific operation. Because I get to ride the helicopter. Yes. That was, that was haphazardly too. put together um, to I, try to determine how this is happening. Can we stop it? What can we do about it? Yeah. Um, different scientists are pursuing different things. For instance, Sarah, uh, the female, the only female character in the film, yeah. is pursuing more of the, how is it happening? How can we stop it? How can we reverse it? Right on, man! Where is Dr. Logan is trying to find a way just to deal with it. Yeah. And he's obviously having a little bit more success, but it would Well, take... deal with it, or is is he kind of a Franken Dr. Frankenstein? I mean, he... he... He seems to be, once he's got Bub, he, he just dives way deep into this, okay? If, you, if you're given money to dissect these zombies and, and, and work on them, I guess maybe mentally you start losing it a bit. Well, and, first and he, he really goes deep into, yeah. and, and then kind of, if, if you really think about it, starts to lose it. As, as it you goes know, on. I, I mean, he, and he's got his pet, Bub, uh, Bub you know. That it's he, like he started trying you know, to figure out exactly... How they think. Yeah. Why do they only want to eat human flesh? And he even shows her, you know, he takes her into into the lab. Yeah. And, and shows her he's got a couple bodies sitting there. And one of them, he's like, I've taken out all of his internal organs. Right. Except the brain. And yet, you know, when he holds his <laughs> hand over him, he's still trying to bite. So yeah. it's just, and he traces it back to, you know, the, the deepest recesses of your brain, the the our whatever, whatever, the, the little, little goo of jelly yeah. that we that you know the reptilian part of all of us all comes to that, which and, yeah. you know, which is just to eat and survive, and that's what they're going on, and so you know he's got another body. They don't really digest it, right? He's got another body that uh, he's he's not that that's how doctor the one with the head talks, the head's all gone except for the brain. Yeah, that that's pretty bitching. Oh, and yeah, <laughs> he electrocutes at the show. That mm -hmm. the arms, but electricity could do that anyway, so yes. that, that was kind of dumb. But, but so know. his idea is more to there's so many of them, we have to get them to stop wanting to eat us, right? Because they don't <laughs> physically need to eat us, no. So no. if we can train them, yeah. And he has this star pupil, Bob, but yeah. his idea is, is just really not going to work for these. Millions and millions of, of zombies. Well, yeah, no. The, the concept... He's proving a point, but I think right. it's more of an exception, not a rule. You're not going to be able to do that with all of them. Right. You, you're not going to be able to control... Uh, that's where Which I think... Which is shown in the movie. Yeah, and that's where I think I was... My point was he's kind of losing it. He's, he's losing focus. Like, y your focus should be, how do we destroy these, uh, you know, zombies? How that's can really we, how it should be. Yeah, and, and here he's trying to... Then he goes into, you know, uh, how can we control them? And the problem you know, is there's just too many. Yeah. Even when they're in the streets of Florida, there's just... And it's just like in Walking Dead and stuff like that, or in the original Night of the Living Dead. One or two of them, yeah, you can take you can take care of yourself, no problem. Yeah. It's just when there's two hundred of them around, yeah, you know, you can't. Even though they're slow, you can't get away. Like when um, there's just too many. Like when ants are down, you know. Remember that whole year we took of just uh, manipulating the ants that That's we found, right. and I mean, we tied these ants down to like little. We went way out. I mean, we had a budget of like I think what five hundred thousand dollars. That was enough to get us through government grant. The, the small tables that we had for the ants themselves, and um, even the ants themselves, you cut off each section, they they would continue even mm -hmm. with the head. You know, we got the, the head one, would just roll. Well, and we use the antlers. We tied down the one ant, and even the head and the eyes just kept going. Still, it was where? Where am I? Where? You know, I mean, it wasn't talking because I I don't speak ant. I know. But you know what I'm saying? Um, the once in future badass returns. It's so sad when he said it. That man, I cried when he said it. What? Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. Oh, what, <laughs> dude. What, what John said. Yeah. Dude, our drinks cause they know she ain't giving them uh, any sweet. I love hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, well there's the girl, the woman, Sarah. She is in the a relationship with the most effeminate of the soldiers, Miguel. Probably felt sorry for him, I well, guess. Well, I shouldn't say effeminate. He is cracking at the beginning of the Yeah, film. he's just losing it. He, he can't handle it. He's I mean, the one. Some people break down, who's man. Like, it's like now, zombies, the world's full of zombies. I can't take this no you more. Know, he's like those people, the crazy oh. people out there that think the world's going to end now. 
you know, like we have now. And, um, but he just sees it. You know, the world's never going to be the same. It's gone. And that is just <laughs> messing with his head. Well, thanks for being here, Tork. Um, and he's making mistakes. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. As usual, he's... we always talk. And if anybody's listening to us on iTunes, uh-huh. uh, because this is always a, a, you know put together as a podcast, um, feel free, if you guys, if you want to listen to this later, if you're jumping back and forth or something, mm-hmm. check us out on iTunes. Um, anywhere you find podcasts, there, it's out there. And um, But anybody listening to us on iTunes or, or, or a podcast... Uh, we're reading off of the YouTube chat because we mm-hmm. always stream live off of YouTube. Um, it's just fun. Or at least we fun. have been lately. Yeah, it's just fun. We've done it all. Every Tuesday night, um, yeah, 9 p.m. Uh, and Saturday nights, we got trivia nights. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, the bell. And what were we talking about? Sarah. We were talking about her relationship with Miguel. Yeah, yeah. He's he's cracking. He's cracking. She's trying to get him, you know, get, get, get him some downtime. He's cracking. Talking because they're they have a new a commander. They're, the um, the old commander had just recently died, yes. and actually uh, Doctor Logan here doc, uh, had did a little switcheroo with the body so that he could do some <laughs> experimenting. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not only just experimenting the on the bodies of deceased soldiers, but he, we find that he's also using them to feed the zombies as a reward yeah. for good behavior. Yeah, yeah. And hold on, Sean. Um, you know, so they have a new commander now. This is Captain Rhodes. Um, who is a jackass. And he's one of those guys who the power just totally went to his head. And He's he, a little guy. It's a Napoleonic complex, yeah, I think. I think he, it's written that way. Yeah, yeah. And Because he even says, you know, anybody that messes with my command. And and, and, and you got to think. Every, his thought process is, there's nobody else alive. I'm in control. This is a small... Even though he's got, what... At the time, it was like six guys to like four or five. Yeah, he's just yeah, got a handful like, left. Come on, man. Just shoot Just shoot that guy. And the purpose um, of the military being there is to provide the scientists. Phil's the- creepy videos. Sorry if I <laughs> jumped oh, no no uh, Thanks for being in the YouTube I chat. Nice to see you here. <laughs> I scared Ted. But um, the, the military, yeah. they're, it's not a military operation. Right. Their purpose is to... <laughs> Help procure them, my shoulder. procure them specimens. Yeah. And, you know, Rhodes is, you know, I don't see any results. I don't even know what you guys are doing down there. Oh, yeah. And why should my guys, you know, sacrifice their asses to, you know, when I don't even know I think what's going sir, on. Because I think some of his guys have, have been dying off from just yeah. being killed, from doing, they have getting the zombies from. Walkers yeah. corralled. Yeah, cor- and, yeah, and in the mine, which which is a real mine. Yes, in Florida. In Florida, or no, yeah. or no was it was it no. Florida or was it Pittsburgh? No, no, it was in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Forgive me. It's in Pennsylvania or the Bahamas. And no, they only filmed that one exterior shot from the beginning in Florida, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And the rest was in um, Zachary Haith. What is um, up? Nice to see yeah, you. Yeah, it's it's miles of tunnels. That's kept at about fifty-five degrees all year long. Yeah, um, it's still yeah, it still, still runs. There. It's still mm-hmm. being used as a facility. It, so this the part mines. storage yeah. facility, part government storage yeah. facility. Um, Real zombies are kept. I had heard right, that. I heard. You know, they, they, actually, he's not lying. Um, the character John, when he says, you know, there's military records down there, copies of Hollywood films. That that stuff is actually yeah. there because I was watching some bat behind the scenes stuff yeah. before the. Mo- the show. Yeah, you went. Um, you all went the government there. cheese is yeah. down there. Government cheese is down there. <laughs> yeah, they, said, they said there were pallets of government here cheese. Here, let me get to a couple uh, yeah, people please. made some. Uh, Sean Bliss said, uh, Dino and Ted, I enjoy the conversation. I have learned a lot. How do you guys feel about Return of the Living Dead Part 2? Um, and, and once to the future badass return, Sean Bliss, it was, a, it was good. Not as good as the first one, but. Uh, and Part 3 is a train wreck. Um, I'm just catching up here. What's up, man? Phil's creepy video. Zachary Haith. It is nice to see you in the chat there, Zachary. Uh, it's been a while. Um, Zachary, the special effect was amazing. Story was uh, new. Um, part three. Uh, it's historic. Okay, I think. Wait, one more. Uh, everybody has different tastes, which is fine. It would be boring if we all had. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Bambi's mom, America's Zombie Storage Center. Bambi's mom, that is right. <laughs> yes, yes. But Sean Bliss, Return of the Living Dead 2. Um, Not as good as Return of the Living Dead 1. Right, but, but, but very we, enjoyable. We did a show on it, did, did, did we do Return of the Living Dead 2? 
You guys don't have to go back and check. I know we I did, know the first we did one. one. And I know I watched two for the show. But did we, sometimes something happens and we don't do yeah, the show? Yeah, I can't remember if we I can't did. Remember if we did but, it. but but still a great movie. Because yeah, I remember us talking about how they they went and, and spoke, you know, you know how in the first one the zombie says bring more yeah. uh, send more cops. Send more cops. <laughs> and in part two, they're in the hospital. Right. And and he's he sends We did it. Yeah, because I remember. Said something. Like, so yeah, 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 it's back there. Yeah, it's we Man, did that so one. long ago. We did so many That's commentaries, man. That oh. this film had as well. Yeah. Is that Return of the Living Dead came out the year before. And see George Romero. I love the Michael Jackson zombie cameo. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talked about that at the beginning. Go back and listen. George but, yeah. Romero and uh, his his writing partner, forgive me, the, the name is slipping me for a moment. But um, John Van Horn. Russo, maybe? Russo, I think. Russo. Yep. Um John. You know, there was there was a falling out and it was, you know, Russo got the copyright. I think he was found in bed with his wife, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. Was that? Oh. oh, God. oh. Romero's family coming Woo. in for our show. Sorry. <laughs> Next that. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but um, Russo maintained the rights to the Living Dead title, the name. Yeah. Um, which is a shame because you know it doesn't flow as well with the other two movies. You know, it would have been nice if it was just Night of the Dead and then Dawn of the Dead. You know. yeah. So that's why you got Return of the Living Dead. Right. And that came out the year before this movie. People, some people were confused. You know, is this? You know, yeah, what's going on? You know, we, saw Retur- we saw Return of the Living Dead now, Day of the Dead, and <laughs> and it's like, well, this isn't like Return of the Living Dead. It, it actually, they just came out too soon, unfortunately. <laughs> what? They just came out too too close together, unfortunately. <laughs> and that was more for the fair weather fan, real yeah. fans of Romero. You know. They turned up for it. A lot of them just didn't like it because it wasn't Dawn of the Dead yeah. 2. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think as time has gone by and people grow and mature, you start to see what your elder was trying to talk about. Yeah. And that was, you know, just the that decade of the 80s, halfway gone, um, not being able to, you know, being lied to by the military and the government right. and not knowing who you can trust anymore. You know, you had uh, very political the release of AIDS, yeah, very... and you know rumors that it was released by you know labs and governments, right. and, and who do you trust? Who you know, and and there was all that. There's all this paranoia, especially Rhodes. If that guy is not <laughs> delusional, um, I don't know who is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. And you know, also like we haven't mentioned the other scientist in the film. His name's Fisher. That's John Amplis, who, who you remember was uh, Martin. In, right. in Romero's fucking masterpiece. Yes, yes. Um, and and he, he, he sports uh, what I'm thinking is a fake mustache, but it could be real. Who knows? It could have been real. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe he couldn't. I don't know. It, it looked very odd. Right. It looked like an actor putting on, you know, special effect makeup mm-hmm. and stuff just for the part. So, you know, there's that. Right. And, um, so after all this brouhaha, you know, Rhodes is laying down the law. He's threatening people's lives. Yeah. Um, and he wants results and he wants them now. He wants to know everything that goes on before it happens. And, and you got to remember, Sarah's the only female around now. Yeah, and they do make some comments, you know. And um, actually, Rhodes. the Fisher character even says, you know, you need to physically watch yourself. Oh, yeah. She's not too concerned about it. And actually, she's pretty tough and can handle she is, She's a badass. She's, and, um, you know. But at this meeting, he has then finally the doctor shows up, Dr. Logan. And he, he says, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you results. And he does his little speech about, yeah. you know, making them not want to eat us. And, you know, the Rhodes, he's going off, you know, we should just be focusing on killing them and, you know, shooting the piss out of them. And, like, <laughs> and how are you going to do that? And even if you do get out of here, where are you going to go? We can't reach anybody on the radio. The equipment evidently is pretty old and not in the best of shape. Um, the guy, McDermott, the, the Irishman who looks like a really like anorexic Mr. Bean. With, with, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with a beard, mustache and beard. Who is it? That's McDermott, right? Yeah, McDermott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> always sipping on his flask. You know, the really guy. anorexic Mister Bean. Lord Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I mean, I think that he says that. That's like, mostly his line. Yeah, he says that over everything. Jesus, like, Mary, Mary Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> he doesn't say it with an accent, but but he does say. I think it. I did better than he did. Yeah, yes, you, you know, did. his job is to try to raise somebody on the radio to fix the radio, maintain the radio. So Rhodes is doing all this yelling, all right, and threatening. Yeah. And even John, the helicopter pilot, you know, he, he makes the comment to him later. He's like, they're not going to shoot me, man, because I fly the whirly bird. They're not going to shoot him because he does the radio. The doctor, they'll probably let him live. But, but the you, rest of you, yeah, you know, and even Rose says, I don't even know why I'm keeping you around. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're just eating up supplies. <laughs> and, 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 but gives her that look. And know? he is over the top. And that was one of the problems a lot of critics and fans had with the film. Rhodes is over the top, but that is exactly what Romero wanted. Because when you're trapped in here, yeah, you know, it, it's to bring out the stress of everybody. You know, I mean, even the doctor here on the screen. You know, he, he, as the film goes, he just—if you close your eyes, I swear to God, I just hear uh, Herbert West. His oh, voice yeah, sounds yeah. so much like Herbert West. It does. He, yeah, he, yeah. He's like Herbert West on on a lot of caffeine. Full Moon, Charles <laughs> Band movies. I'm yeah. sure you know Reanimator. Everybody knows Reanimator, yeah. right? If you know uh, um, Jeffrey Combs. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just who he reminds me of. Just Jeffrey the, Combs there, on speed. There. It's funny you mention that because there's there, there's a, a Reanimator feel to this movie. They, they to both me, came out same same year. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess with the doctor back in the, you know, working on the bodies. I don't know, something, there was just a feel to it. Um, it was just that for year. For me. Uh, you know. But I mean, this film had, you had the special effects, you know, you had Tom Savini yeah. doing his master work. Oh, yeah. You had yeah, Greg yeah. Nicotero working on this one, too, actually even, even starring in it as well. No. Nope. But um, it sounds no. like just the... The, the area, the lab that they worked in, yeah. where they did all their work on the special effects. It's just every actor that I saw in these interviews just said, That's where I wanted to be oh, the yeah. whole time, just yeah. to see what they were doing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, it was. There's some great effects. Great effects, but not fantastic makeup. I, I think you get a little bit more of that. Better than Dawn. Putting the blue makeup on when you can still see skin and all Better that. Better than but, Dawn. Although yeah, Sabini yeah. says that it was supposed to have been gray. But that the lighting and the film made it come out blue. Yeah, he's been on record saying it was supposed to be gray. So it was a color grading mistake. But his, yeah. his the the direction that he did on the remake yeah. of Night of the Living Dead in 1990, that makeup is really good. You get like um, um okay, I'm a nurse, so I've seen dead people. Got a couple good questions, but when okay, you're ready. I, I've seen people who have passed away, and when they've laid for a while, some of you may know the blood. Yeah. yeah. Just pools down the bottom of the body, and you'll get these large purple oh yeah patches, yeah, yeah. not bruises, but they look like bruises. My grandfather worked in a morgue and, and mm -hmm. worked with the bodies, and boy, does he have stories to tell. Nope. See, so yeah. and in the remake of Nothing Did, I just remember you know you would see bodies walking, and you would see those those patches back there. So it's actually pretty accurate. Yeah, um, I just recommend watching the original. There's nothing wrong with the remake. It's you know. I yeah. got, you know, at that time, Night of the Living Dead had no copyright on it, so they weren't really making any money on it. So right. it was sort of a way to make some money on it, finally. Yeah. And it gave Tom Savini a chance to direct a film and, and do some cool effects. But his effects work on the dead bodies was actually a little bit more accurate in that. Yeah, film, no, cool. And there's respect. there's there's one, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a couple in, in a little bit here. But uh, two questions um, really quick there. Uh, and we'll whatever order, but um, they were talking about the Fulci zombie movies. I don't know if you've seen enough to really be a big fan, but that's the, the one that there's I, that um, question. And, go ahead. Remember, I showed you a trailer the other day. You had never, you haven't seen Zombie. 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 Um, now I've seen it. I, I'm a fan of, of that film. Uh, now, when Dawn of the Dead was released in Italy, I think I was telling you it was called Zombie. Yeah. Or Zombies, whatever. It right. Was. Right. And. Um, Right, my so friend. So in Italy, when that film came out, they called it Zombie 2. Yeah, right, right. And it was supposed to be a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. That right. was a very common thing to do in Europe and in Italy especially, mm -hmm. Spain, uh, to make sequels to big movies yeah. of their own. So I, I'm at least, I haven't seen like, you know, I think they've made other ones. Yeah. That one from, I think, 78, 79, that's the only one I've seen and I'm a fan of it. I do really like okay. it. Okay. And um, uh, Bambi's mom says, uh, out of the Living Dead trilogy, which one would you place yourself in a zombie pandemic? One, two, or three? 
And, and I'm, I'm guessing you're... Are you like, which, which film would I rather be in or what situation I'd rather be in? I guess so. Oh. If we're talking about the George Romero zombie, three zombie movies, I, I don't know if you're talking about Return of the Living Dead 1, 2, or well, 3. Well, but, but if I was last You know man, which one I would be, Dawn of the Dead. I would Probably be, me too. Yeah. Um, I mean, have that if, mall at your, you know, back this end. Film oh, yeah. is a little too dark and nihilistic. Although, yeah. if I was one of the last men standing here, I'd be on an island somewhere. But yeah. I would basically be living out the rest of my days on that well, island. Which, t- which uh, happens, ain't so uh, bad. Being pent up in a mall yeah. for a while is was fun, but as we learned in that movie, yeah. it starts to get to a point where you have everything and you don't even want it anymore. You'd rather ah, go on. out there and take your chances. Ah, come on. And I'd... if I was last man standing in Night of the Living Dead, I'd have got shot in the head by some redneck. So... Think, think about everything. <laughs> direct could... out to the fire. Think about everything you could do in this. Uh, yeah, But. House by the Cemetery was especially open. I think that was a Fulci, too. Yes, so, it is. Yes, uh, but it I is. haven't seen it. Which situation? You but have? I guess if I had to pick, mm-hmm. if it, like put me at the ending of one of these three movies, it would be Day of the Dead because I'd be on a beach and well, I'm, safe. I get you. Drinking I, my beer out of coconuts. I'm still Dawn of the Dead. I mean, you but give see, me they that. left the mall. You give, in they, the end, they left. Well, I don't care. I would have stayed in the mall and I would have made it a fortress. But and look what happened when they made it a fortress. They got attacked. Ah, they were dumb. It was a movie. Come on. Yeah, they took very good precautions. They put those trucks uh, in front of the doors. Uh, they a even truck? Mac trucks. You, you they need put to... those Mac trucks in front of the doors uh, okay. and locked them. And they built that fake oh, wall. Oh, they locked them, huh? They built that fake wall. Please. But the... they did good things. Ted, I mean, they could have come. Dumb. You never leave glass between you and zombies, okay? Never. I don't care if you park cars in front of it and trucks. Something could happen. A, a hurricane could swipe on through, knock a truck over, and next thing you know, you got zombies coming, breaking down the glass, and you're like, shit, I knew I should have welded metal about six feet thick they, all in the front of that entrance there. Where are they going to get huge sheet metal like that inside the mall? I don't know. I guess they could... Yeah, you the mall's made out of out whatever. Out. Yeah, I mean, what happens you know. if the power goes out eventually? Up. You're in total darkness. That's fine. Candles f- make a fire in the middle of the thing. You know, you <laughs> bust <rest> your life <laughs> fire pit. You know, uh, I mean, eventually, I'm sure I'd have All to the food's venture gonna out. Rot eventually, eventually, I'm going to have to. See, you know, if I'm on an out. island, I can fish. I can eat. Do you nuts. like the Do you like the part in the movie? Where um, I can eat nuts. <laughs> <laughs> where John, the helicopter pilot, the the West Indian man, uh, he's sitting. Uh, Sarah goes over uh, and and finds out their trailer, which looks very homey. The Ritz. Down there. They, they, the they Ritz. came at the Ritz, and, and, and they, they go, live far away from everybody else. Yeah. Like, Nobody comes out here. But and Sarah goes in like there, it. goes back towards where he's sitting. Yeah. And there's lounge chairs, and he's got it all made up nice. I wish I was like expecting some sand something. to be on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but there but, was. Uh, but I like what he tells her, you know, after we we talk, discussed yeah. it, you know, and nothing's worth anything anymore down there. Right, that's he what goes, we're talking about. He, he goes, we should make babies. He didn't mean he make, and her. Uh, I think he did. He just, well, that's what would they have to Whoever's do. Whoever's left. Well, no, I know. Repopulate Unfo- the planet. Find some other people. Get to Repopulate, an island somewhere. Yeah. If you like me babies. and we make a love... You know, we we make you know there'd be some chocolate babies and you know, so but <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, cappuccino. I shouldn't even say unfortunately. Yeah, that's actually what needs to happen. Well, right. You yeah. know, you need to get to a place, pick an island. I don't care where. Yeah. Make sure there's no no zombies on it. Hey hey hey, Dave Pluffet is here. No Ted, not Dave Coulier. <laughs> hey Dave Pluffet. <laughs> Dave Coulier. Uh, how you doing, me? Um, Zachary Haith, uh, Bed Bath and Beyond candles with. Would come in handy. Exactly. See, I hate all those smells. Exactly. Come on. You're a mall guy. I I'm, no, I I'm get it. Laying on a beach island guy with a nice cool breeze Ted, coming off the ocean. No, I'm not saying I wouldn't like to go to the beach. It's just okay. Let me put it this way. Okay. <laughs> what do you want? You're trying to convince me? <laughs> if I could, if I could keep fueling the helicopter to go back and forth to my vacation home oh, okay. on the beach. And then See, back home the to the mall. Gas is gonna run out. And then back, yeah. Food's gonna run out. Okay, maybe the mall for ten years. Bullets and, and, are gonna run out. And, and then go off to the I'll beach. Be on an island. island, like Rip Van Winkle, the big long beard, no. wearing a coconut shell on my head. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you come man. strolling up the beach like a like a Morgan Freeman at the end of Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> we embrace. <laughs> I thought I told you I'd find you. I'd find you behind the log. Uh, if anybody's uh, ever going to narrate my life, I want it to be Morgan Freeman. Yeah, you know, I mean, come on. If anybody ever writes my biography, um, he's the, got so- the audio book. The soulless trench coat uh, dawned for the mall, but if uh, it may be hard because it is large and many entrances. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in in the film, in my did, point, I would. They did take a pretty good. I would bunker down. They, you know, you know, it didn't do. It did great against the zombies. What they did. What it didn't yes. do great in yes, man. was against the army of bikers that invaded later. <laughs> you know, yeah. You against know. the zombies, it worked. And again, that's the thing that gets, that got to me with the mall. You know, mm-hmm. letting, you know to, to let those, again, if you got glass and there's a way in, you know, these bikers, you know, yeah, they spoiled everything, man. But, you know, I guess they and we just... knew a couple of those bikers. I know. Remember? I know. You know, we grew up with them. I know. Fat, uh, what was her name? Fat Mama. No. And uh, and there was Fat Freddy Dance. Yep. Uh, Dance. Um, Guido. Yeah. Yep. And they were part the of. They were part of Hell's Angels, mm-hmm. you know, at the time. Mudflap. Who were big down in Monroeville. And they would hit all the five and dime stores, mm-hmm. you know, and they would get all the whistles. Yes. And you, uh, you always knew that the Hell's Angels broke into town. Uh, because they would ride off literally in in, in the sunset. Um, you would hear <laughs> with all the whistles from the five and dime stores. It, it's 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 unbelievable. They always sing that so black fantastic. leather, black leather, cha cha cha. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Driving, and... good stuff, man. I'm telling you. But um, you, you know, it's 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 a fantastic thing. But um, anyways, we we it's a fantastic thing. <laughs> it's fantastic. But, uh, yeah, I mean, getting towards... Um, Have we talked about Bub and what Bub can do? Let's talk about Bub, because Bub, Bub is fantastic in this movie. I want to say... My favorite uh, zombie of all time. Can I say something? Yeah, you can say several things if you want. it's been said by other people before, but I want to say it on this show. It's been said by other people? It has to have been. I'm sure it has been. Okay. That I think this... Wave the this comments guy, below. Sherman, yeah. who, who did Bub, did such an amazing job. Oh, yeah. Of this character, yes, which was almost completely silent. Yes, I think it rivals Frankenstein and from from the original Frankenstein movie. Bub, you think? I, I think it's almost on that level of good. <laughs> Not even close. It is almost on that level but of good. When you when emotion, you're talking zombies, hey, the emotion, uh, the working through the makeup. You know, you're a watch universal. It again, you're a universal guy. I'm a universal and... guy. And I'm telling you, he did that good okay. job. Who did a job that was even close to that? It's a fantastic job, but two separate, you know... It's two separate types of movies. I'm talking about an actor working under a okay. lot of makeup. Okay, no, I would yeah. give him, and I would say Roddy McDowell in, in the Planet, Planet of the Apes, Apes Oh, yeah. All right. I would say those three guys Whew. working under makeup I'd say the only downs- the only downside towards uh, the Bub character... Someone will agree with me. No, no, I, Ted, no, I, I'm not disagreeing that he didn't do a fantastic job, right. because he did. I said Bub, it's almost that good. Bub was fantastic, but if he had a little bit more screen time, you know, and no, maybe, screen. then I would agree with you. But well, because he, don't they like the character so fantas- much, they did add extra scenes in. I am going to compare. Or Cornelius. I am going to compare. It was a I mean, fantastic job under yeah, all that it, makeup. And it, a lot of actors can't work no, under I, that makeup. I mean, I agree with you. I That's mean, right. it's fantastic. And I'm talking about, you know, in the first Frankenstein film, he didn't talk. It was grunting, the eyes, the face. That had to carry the emotion. Same thing with this character. Not so much with Roddy McDowell, even though he did a fantastic job under yeah. makeup. I'm talking about, you know, an actor who's under all this makeup and doesn't talk. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you could have just put... Okay, then why don't they just get some extra and stick him under that makeup? Why'd they get an actor? Um, Because they needed somebody. Well, no, of course, for the right. part of Bub. I mean, yeah. But any you, other you movie, need... they would have just stuck an extra. Anybody in there, yeah. Exactly. Well, you, you have a little bit before that. They get the two other ones from the corral, mm-hmm. and, and they just stick them in the... Um, you know the room and tie them up. You know, with right. the, and they were nothing. And even they were fantastic. But yeah, when no. he turns off the light on the one, yeah, you actually hear him just whimper a little bit. And that's why I said Bub is one of the you most know. iconic zombie characters in the history. So of they are showing in a world. way that so, 
Yeah. This film does take some new steps in that it shows... Take care, Sean Bliss. He's off. Oh, okay. No problem. Next no time. Problem. It's a weekday. I get it. Yeah. Um, or, you know, maybe someone else has a show that you want to watch. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> but they do show... You know, they do have emotions. They do do have the ability to learn mm-hmm. at, to some point. They do remember things. Actually, the part you know, right here, you know, on the on the screen here, we're we're looking at, yeah, with where they're gonna see the the, the zombie I was just talking about when yeah. the, when Logan turns the light off. You hear him kind of whimper a little bit, yep. you know, yep. yeah, like a child would. Um, but Bub is the star pupil, um, and what's cool about Bub is, uh, and what Sarah is the one who notices it because everyone's watching. What's the big deal? Okay, yeah, he's looking at a book. He's playing with a phone, whatever. It's like, well, aren't you paying attention? He's not getting excited when the doctor walks in there. Yeah. He's not wanting to eat him. I'll get to you, Solus. He doesn't, you know, that's the cool thing. Yeah. And I love the, it's not in this part that we're talking about, it's later on. Right. They came up with an idea, let's do another scene with Bub, because yeah. we really like him. And the actor's one that had the idea, what happens if we let him listen to music? Right. I mean, look at his eyes when, when that Beethoven starts playing. Oh, heck you yeah. You know, they get real wide. And well, it's, even it's when almost a military like he's in a trance. Guy. Oh yeah, and speaking of military, he, when um, when uh, Rhodes walks in, the, the zombie salutes him. He, you know, obviously he's in the military. He remembers. Yep, yep. Um, Solus Trenchcoat uh, brings up uh, a, a good point. I, I'm talking about Bub. I still think Bub, fantastic, probably the best character. But Tar Man from Return of the Living Dead was cool. Another very iconic zombie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still, Bub is still there. He's number one. But good point. That's, you know, that's one that mm-hmm. can be put out there as, as maybe one of your favorites of all time. John Cox. Needed what more is, screen oh. time, though. I'll tell you that. He was just too cool to. Yeah, yeah. Too cool to not be in there as long as he was. Nice to see you here, John Cox. Uh, what's up, guys? I love this movie. Seen it in the theater back when I was younger. Yes. Very, very cool, man. Um, Couldn't get my folks to take me. <laughs> You're a good man enjoying the show, says so Solus Trenchcoat. He does also bring up, uh, what about Lon Chaney, the OG man of a thousand faces? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean we could the... point out, yeah, tons Adam of... The Opera, Hunchback, and, and all the other films he yeah. did. You know what was great? He did his own makeup. Oh, People yeah. wouldn't know. I mean... Hell yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I haven't even begun to see all the films he's been in. Um, you know, and there's some that are lost and, yeah. and, and all that, but... Uh, you know, just those. Yeah, yeah, no, no. That's a that, that's an art, and I think this particular actor playing playing Bub in this film just did a really exceptional job. Uh, probably more so than any of the other actors that have played zombie type characters. Yeah, and I don't, I haven't watched all of Walking Dead. I, I, I'm very, very not versed in it, but right. I understand that he reprised the character in one of the seasons. His, his that character's in it. Oh really? Yeah, Bub. Yeah, it's a season four episode, I think. But they probably didn't draw a lot of attention to it. But he does put the makeup on in the. I'm a Walking and Dead fan. I'm trying to remember the. Uh, it probably they probably didn't draw a lot of attention. Yeah, to it must have been very it. short. Because I know um, lots, even lots of celebrities have. Yeah. You know, put right, the makeup right. on and stuff. Oh my god! I gotta you know, like go Scotty back and from check Andrew that out. You know, that, yeah. that midgets in every show. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean... Um, I could say that because I met him and I'm short and he's smaller than me. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, hey, again, let's start moving towards the end of the film. Because, I mean, there's not a whole lot more really to talk about in just the middle of this movie, right? I mean, it, you know, the crux of the matter is everything's breaking down. And They've lost, they're losing more People men. are getting really pissed at each other and, and, and th- they kind of end up wanting to separate especially after uh what what's the the breaking point is when um captain rhodes comes into the lab mm-hmm. and finds out that the doctor the doctor logan is, has used yeah. um his deceased soldiers bodies yes not just for experiments but as i said to as a treat as a treat for the zombies for a, a job well because sarah sarah and fisher um mm-hmm. They were kind of wondering, well, how is he getting Bub to do this, mm-hmm. to do what he's doing? You know, the toothbrush. There has to be reward. He even says that. Reward. Yeah. So they it's were wondering. Important. And at that point, that's when you find out. And and that's when, you know, Captain Rhodes goes ape shit. And I forget what he says, 
but he hollers out something. This <laughs> monkey show or something like that, or <laughs> screams out at us, what's going on here? And I almost said, why, why did he say that? Why didn't he say this dog and pony show? Because I don't know why. That's what I'm used to hearing. Dog and pony show. But, but um, that was the breaking point. He, he, you know, that's when they started, whoa, we got to split up here and get out. And, mm-hmm. and that's when, you know, you get Sarah, you know, um, John and McDermott. Um, actually, Captain Rhodes takes Sarah and um, McDermott mm-hmm. and l- releases them into the uh, tunnels. And um, well, the, the the corral, the the corral. As things are falling apart, here's but they what, find out. Go ahead. So, like, here's what's going on. Um, they were grabbing a couple more specimens. Yeah, the shit goes down. All right, uh, Miguel, who is Sarah's love interest, although you don't get a whole lot of chemistry. Later torque, them. later torque. Oh no, there we go. Thanks for stopping by. Some other show that's <laughs> go, than go on. and. Um, <laughs> they can't sit oh, through an hour of our crap. And just for the record, when she gives him that shot, that sedative, oh, yeah. you don't give people shots in the scapula. There's a really big, thick, hard, hard bone, bone there. there. <laughs> you give them here. You give them here. You give them in the thigh. You give them in the ass. Of everything you're talking about in a movie, you're talking about a shot. You know? Come on. No hot. Or I love when they show people giving injections and they do it this way. Yeah. All right, no, you do it this way. The blood flow Let's put it goes in this way. This way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I love that. That's... I was watching a movie with Christopher Lee the other day, and he was giving himself, it was Eye Monster. Yeah, yeah. And he's giving himself a shot. They're like, oh, yeah, don't do it that Christopher way. Christopher Lee, you should know better. He's doing what the director told him to do. Yeah. Okay. So... But, um... One of the uh, zombies gets loose yeah. while Miguel's trying to hold it. Ends up killing a couple guys. Mm-hmm. Um, even even Miguel himself is going to end up getting uh, bit on the arm. This is croaked. Croaked. I may be saying things out of order here. No, no. It's a, it's a really cool effect when she has to oh, cut, yeah. cut his arm we, off. We, we totally didn't even talk about that. To try yeah. to save him. After he gets bit, yeah. Cut, cuts mm-hmm. that arm off. Sorry, I right. didn't mean to interrupt. So like, had, like, I got excited. An arm got cut off. Because they have Jesus. like the, the rubber arm there. Jesus, mother and but Mary. you can't take a machete, a machete. and do it because it's going to bounce. It's not going to look good on right. film. So you you put some like uh, pressure wax or meat or I don't know, something soft there. Tom Savini That'll did that right, with the yeah, wax arm. That'll go yeah. right through it. And, you know, they do the editing back and forth so it looks real. Yeah. But when they finally scrape the arm away... Ugh. And they cauterize and then, it. And then she goes, does anybody got, uh, or we need fire or whatever. Anybody got a light? <laughs> and, she, and she goes, puts the wrap around the, the you know, stick, man, or whatever she got, I forget. Uh, pours gasoline on her. Yeah. Her. And, and, and McDermott just goes, Psh. Light it up. And then goes right through that arm, yeah. that stump, Ooh. you know. Yes. They would do that in the Civil War. They, they would just take fire, man, and just, uh, it was, when you it was, are in a pinch you know, and you got nothing else you can do. Rambo did yeah. it. Rambo 3 didn't get yeah, shot. Yeah, put or, that gunpowder in it. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Badass Rambo. I, mean, I guess if you had to do oh, it. Oh, yeah. But um, then, you know, Rhodes and, and Steel, the big bully kind of guy, they show up. Yeah. And they, they just want to put a bullet between his eyes. Yep, yep. You know, and they finally, you know, she says, you know, if he turns, I'll take care of it. We'll take care. He lets him do it, you yeah. know. But as things start to disintegrate, more and more, and and Rhodes Rhodes. says, "Screw it! You guys are going there, and you're the yep. helicopter pilot. You're taking us out of here." Well, you know, he the, he and Steele end up blowing away the doctor. <laughs> you know, after that happens, which yeah. when Bub finds his body, he's very heartbroken. Oh, that because yeah. Bub gets loose. He's he's by himself, and the chain. I moves. love that scene. Yeah, yeah. The chain comes off. Yeah, and and he goes, What Whoa. I love is he's walking around <laughs> looking for him. Like, fix it. Yeah, yeah. Put put, put, put me back. And, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just, it's just really cool, you know, for but that I character. But th- I think the, the learning part for the zombie kind of goes against what Dr. Logan was saying was going on with the brains of these zombies. So that was kind of a little confusing. Well, because they're being controlled by that little bit of goo. Yeah. So what we've got to do is we've got to over... That's nature. Yeah. We have to overcome it with nurture. Mm-hmm. So what we have to do is show it kindness. Yeah. You know, teach kill it to it not with, be afraid. Kill it with kindness. And reward good behavior. Just like you do yeah. with a child. I mean, you know, I mean, what level of brain activity is a child functioning on when it's first born? Right. You know, I mean, probably not much more than, you know. Right. So, I'm, oh, I'm but, but to understating. But, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but as the film is coming to an end and everything's disintegrating and it's military against the scientists, um, they want they want because McDermott's the one that has the idea earlier in the film. He's like, you know, I'm starting to think we should get on that helicopter before <laughs> yeah, yeah. someone else gets the idea to do it. Yep. Now, and eventually they do get the idea to do it. They're like, you know, me and my men, we're going in that bird. You're taking us. Yeah. And the other two, screw them. And they put them in the uh, the corral. Let the zombies eat them. Yep. And even the, the John tells them, you put them in there, I'm not going to fly. I'm not going to fly. And, and what was it that she knew? Um, she knew there was a way out through there. That there was a... Yes. There, there, there's, there, well, there was a way that they could get out. Yeah. Um, it's like a big tunnel that goes up like a silo. Yeah. And they have to get out that way. But, um, you know, they got to fight their way through. And there's zombies. The way that they lit it... And they did say that because this was really underground. Oh, right. and by the way, right. I mean, they spent like three months underground oh, yeah. doing this. Mm -hmm. Nobody saw the, daylight the light of day for a long time. They actually even had a doctor that would come in and give them B12 shots and vitamin D supplements. Mm -hmm. because, and they all got respiratory, you know, respiratory infection sick. They were blowing out black dust in their noses. This was actually yeah. a hard shoot um, all underground the whole time. Um, you know, they didn't go to a hotel and stuff like that. I mean, you know, they were there. <laughs> Meryl said, right you're, there. You're you're living down here in the dirt. It, yeah. it basically was. I mean, they were so happy to do that Florida shoot. And 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 all <laughs> all of those, right, right. You know? But all the campers you see down there that are yeah. part of the scene were where they were actually living. I, I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And um, so McDermott and Sarah yeah. with a couple of two by fours are fighting their way through there. What I was going to say, just the way that they lit it. It the, just looks were, so vast. They were two by eight. Two by eight. Forgive so. me. And there's a really one of the best Mr. Lumber. Scene, one of the I know. DIY. One of the effects of the shovel. <laughs> yeah. When um, oh that was comes awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sarah and McDermott gets him and, and was right it puts it right through like the mouth. Yeah. The shovel and and pushes it away. Cracks that head yeah, right off. Pushes it away. That was and, really cool. And then when they're running away, you can see the head. It's upside down, but you still see the eyes moving. Yeah. <laughs> That, that is fantastic. Such no, that, a cool a, effect. And, and George Romero does that. He, he always puts a, Savini, quite a few... And, well, Tom Savini, you know, but, you know, it was George Romero who wrote it in the script right. to have... I mean, I don't know if know. he wrote that to do that or if Tom came up with the idea, like, hey, what kind of ideas no, can you come true, up with? True. I'm not sure. I never Shoot that, brother! But yeah, yeah, no, that was a fantastic scene. But, you know, they end up finding their way out and... And John ends up following them. He, but yeah, yeah. Because, you know... He, the shootout. Because what they don't know is what Miguel's doing. Yeah. Miguel has woken up yeah. after having his arm chopped off. The John was supposed to be watching, but he came out after them to help his friends. And Miguel is just saying, fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. He goes, there's like a... We, we didn't mention, but yeah. like when the helicopter lands outside, you know, and there's a marijuana patch in the graveyard yeah. and all that. There's an elevator. Yeah, a lot of military that takes them down. Grounds ha have ground these elevator. kind of big, you know, ground elevators. Yeah, and, like something and, out of a GI Joe movie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he raises the elevator up. He, he screws up the the wiring so mm -hmm. that nobody can get back. Nobody can fix it. He lets all the zombies get up there and start ripping at them. And he hits the down yeah. button, letting them all in. Yeah. And, and that's always one of the great things about these movies is when these these zombies just start biting and chew off mm -hmm. the flesh, especially with the way Tom Savini would do the the way it just was so realistic, especially for the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just did a fantastic just job. Just self taught, man. you know. I mean, now he yeah. has a school, but I mean, right? Or at least right. I, I believe it's still around. If, if I would think so, anybody yeah. does practical effects anymore. Unless but this is sort of what I'm talking about. You know, that, yeah. that these are the kinds of movies I like better. I love stuff with stop motion and real puppets. And, Hell yeah. You know, it just looks so much better. You can tell that CGI blood a mile away, <laughs> and it looks terrible. I know. You know, you got to give me that K-Row syrup. I love that K-Row syrup. Yep. I love that creep show shooting scene in the mine classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... All the zombies, you know, here's where we see the clown zombie, the stogie zombie, yeah. Michael yeah. Jackson, all them. Um, and all the soldiers are, are basically, they're going to get tore up. Steel goes out pretty good. He, he finally, after being a bully to everybody, yep. he finally believes in a higher power. He makes the sign of the cross with a pistol. Yeah, and takes blows himself his out. On, takes himself know? out, yeah, yeah. But um, Rhodes gets it the worst. Yep, the classic. But there's two scene. of them that get it bad. The one guy yeah. gets it real bad. 
where all the zombies are just pulling, they pull the head. Yeah, and, yeah, that's kind of a cool scene, too. The, yeah. They originally wanted it to be sort of like the thing. Yeah. When, that part when the head was pulling off and you see all the tendons and things. Yeah, yeah. And there were just so many hands in the way you just couldn't really see it. But um, You could see some of the zombies, like, looking down, like, you know, I mean, you, it mm-hmm. can't be perfect, but, you know, you see they were watching the process happen. Right. Like, there was one that I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my eyes off of him because he was looking down at him, like, you know, okay, how's it, this is going, this is working, I'm doing my job, this is, <laughs> you know, and I'm like going, yep. Act, 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 but but but, it was, but no one's looking at that. You know, we're looking right, at right, 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 right. You know, but and those those legs flailing mm-hmm. on one end, and then you know the head being pulled to the other. other yeah, it just. And then somebody noticed as they're pulling it, yeah. the screen gets higher pitched, like mm-hmm. like the vocal cords are being stretched. Yeah, that's kind of. I, I think that was an unintended. Unintended, thing, but, but yeah. that's that's pretty coincidental. Cool. And yeah. then Rhodes gets it, and the uh, worst. If you've and, seen it, yeah. you, you know it. They grab him. They rip them open. You see everything. There's a myth that there's a rubber chicken in there. There is not. But the, <laughs> but what's what's iconic about that scene is you'll never forget that white hallway. Yes. With the white door mm-hmm. where they're just constantly looking. And in the beginning of the movie too, where Sarah's sitting there, we didn't talk about, but I'll throw it in real quick because it's 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 something that I always remember with this movie, where she goes up to the calendars and then the hands come through the wall. In the very beginning, yeah. You know, but but yeah, you'll never forget that wall that. fell the first time, by the way. Right, it did. <laughs> but you'll never forget that long in knowing what's behind it once you see the movie, what's behind the door waiting for mm-hmm. roads and that's the only footage yeah. that I remember from the trailer when I was a kid, too. All the hands coming through the door. I remember that very vividly. Yeah. And the, all of you probably it know the story. Me. It scared me. Of uh of roads. But um they took we, a little break in shooting. They went to go to Florida couple days you know for a while to film those scenes there that actually took more than a day yeah um and you know the fort myers there there was they were nice enough to clear out a street there for them Mm -hmm. to do that so it was a couple weeks whatever before they came back to the mine to shoot this scene of Rhodes Rhodes's death yeah and they had all these pig guts now there's a few scenes where like a zombie leans over and a bunch of guts fall out and everything those are pig guts they would scoop them back up throw them in in the pail Put them back in the fridge. Reuse them. <laughs> and ah. So oh. when they were gone that time, the story is that someone turned the refrigerator off. And so for two weeks, that bucket of pig guts. Yeah. And when they came back. S- sitting this, there rotten. This, that day, they were scheduled to do Rhodes' death. Yeah. Too late to get more pig guts. I guess yeah. it's not as easy to get as one may think. And <laughs> <laughs> You're got- I don't have a pig gut guy. <laughs> I've got yeah, a guy for yeah. a lot of things, but not pig yeah. guts. Go to your neighborhood butcher. But it, go ahead. Mm. You know, who knows? So they had to use them. Yeah. And I guess yeah, I saw interviews with Romero saying you could smell that stuff all the way down the halls. Yeah. And... You know, oh. all the actors, oh. the, the, the people behind the cameras, you know, they could put, like, you know, Vicks under their nose or a mask or whatever, but not, not Rhodes. He, and it took four hours to shoot that scene. And he was yeah. there that whole time inhaling that crap. Once in future badass. Yeah, yeah. They know yeah. exactly, man. So that, that's actually yeah. his real expression and face when they rip that open and that smell just, just goes up there. Hits and you can even the, find behind yeah. the scenes footage like when it's done. I mean, he's just like, get me out. Get me out. Yeah. People are going like this trying to fan it away from him. Yeah, that, and it's oh, just like, terrible, oh, man. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, if you could just imagine rotting flesh for two weeks old. Right, yeah. And they had to use it. And, I mean, no joke when he's yelling, choke on it! Choke on it! It's part of the, part of the history of zombiedom. Mm. Something that I, I think will always, you know, go down with when you, you're in discussion about, you know, Day of the Dead. You won't catch a big name actor doing that. Yeah. Maybe, you know, for Romero, they would do it. And see, that's what a lot of these actors were also hoping for. Hey, I'm working with Romero. Yeah, yeah. Doing a dead movie. Mm-hmm. This would be a real boost to my career. You know, okay. nothing. Like, even, I mean, the the guy, uh, John. I forgot the actor's actual name. Uh, something Alexander, I think. Terry or something like that. You're right. You know? I can't remember. Got that. nothing. Got yeah. nothing from yeah. it. Um, the lady who played Sarah, actually, she's a family friend. She, uh... If you remember in the original Night of the Living Dead, towards the end, the, the reporter yeah. you know, that was talking to the guy, oh, yeah, they burn up real easy or whatever, yeah, the reporter, yeah. that's his daughter. Yeah. And actually in Pennsylvania, during that time, he used to do a, he was a horror show host. 
he had like a chiller thriller chiller oh, theater really? yeah, uh, show okay. at that time. So he huh. he did he was a horror show host. Very and he was cool. a, you know, fan yeah. and they got him in there. So it was locally it was a little bit of a boom that they got Love him in. Love me there. some horror host. Yeah, so that's actually his daughter. So they knew each other and, and That's and pretty all. cool. And that that's the thing, you know, I mean the lady who played uh, Galen Ross, who played Fran in Dawn of the Dead, mm -hmm. she worked as like a casting director or whatever for this movie. Yeah. John Amplis, who played Martin, acts in this film. He's worked behind the scenes on a lot of Romero's films. You know, Savini's, you know, obviously he's done stunts oh, yeah, and effects. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, Keep he crew, had that man. same crew. And this, I think, was the last film where they used that Pittsburgh crew and everything. After that, it became a little bit more Hollywood. And, you know, they started throwing money at Romero and there was... Probably what he always yeah. wanted, but probably the worst thing they could have done. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Yeah, how that yeah. happens. Because I mean, he, he did so much better with, you know, look what you can money, do with nothing. Uh, I mean, Martin. I mean, it, look it, what you could do with nothing. Oh, yeah. Fantastic you know? movie. Night of the Living Dead. Look what you do with nothing. Because it makes you... Mm -hmm. It it makes you work and and love what you're doing Innovate. because you're putting things together yourself. Find creative ways of doing yeah, things. Yeah. Ways Fantastic. to get around the story. Um, so, um, after all that happens, our heroes get away in the helicopter and she wakes after a little nightmare, you think a zombie's in the yeah. helicopter and gets yeah. her. That's just like a little bookend to the nightmare that happened at the beginning of the film. Right. And, uh, they awake on a, on a uncharted island. Well, no, I shouldn't say uncharted, it's just a, a tropical And John's going to somewhere. make the babies. One's fishing, one's feeding the gulls. She's resting and, by the helicopter. Yeah. But she's still got that calendar out. It's November, and she's kind of just... Keeping the way track I see it is she's kind of just marking off the days <clears throat> to the rest of her life. Yeah, I mean, you somebody's got to keep time, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, they've got that piddly little radio in there. Piddly. I mean, unless they see a, a boat going by. Yeah. You know, that's it. That's their life. Yeah. You know, they're going to live out their days you know, it, there. It, I, I, I wish I knew exactly where they went, though. Because now I'm just wondering, what island are they on? First one they could find that nobody was on. Can you imagine them going to, like, a Bahamas island or somewhere around Puerto Rico or something like that? And, and, and a hurricane comes by and they're gone, too. And there goes all the babies. Well, maybe there's a cave or something, like in Castaway, and they can hide out Yeah, the cave. that's true. That's you true. Know? I mean, you got to, you know... There's there's bunches of islands out there, so but who yeah, knows? yeah, yeah, but, but, but yeah, that's the yeah, you know, that's, that's the, the just movie, the, man. It, it it is it is dark. There's little to no. There's no intentional humor. In no, it, and uh, not really. Um, there's some unintentional humor, of course. Yeah, and especially when you know some behind the scenes stuff. There's even more, but um, it, it's a little bit more nihilistic. It ends on that dour note. There's there's really no hope. None of them really end with there being much hope. Um, it's a shame. You know, it is the apocalypse. You know, yeah. it's the Mad Max of horror movies. You know, it's just, <laughs> well, it's, most zombie movies gonna go back. are right. I mean, nothing's you know. going to go back. Yeah, it's it's never going to be the same. No, you know, just like here with the Rona, it's just never going to be the same. Oh. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but hey, you guys, I appreciate those who stuck around and uh, you know en enjoyed the show. Uh, enjoyed me and Ted just talking about a movie. Do we not uh, appreciate the ones who that's, left? That's it. No, of course we do. <laughs> yes, we do. But, um, yeah, I ain't saying nothing. My boy didn't stick around. Who's that? Oh, uh, anyways. Um, went to bed. Uh, <laughs> but thank you guys. Make sure you guys check out all the links below. Um, uh, what else can you do? Uh, I do got a Patreon. Uh, you guys could check that out. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to start getting some commentaries up on the Patreon if I start getting more people. So join, uh, search the Late Late Horror Show on Patreon. Right. You got to prove you um, are. Or the link below. So there you go. I mean, uh, Dave Pluffet. Speaking of zombie movies, have you guys ever covered Dead Snow? Yes, Dave. Ages we did. ago. Yes. We did a full commentary on Dead Snow. And Ages that was just a go. That was a fantastic movie, I man. Almost, I mostly just remember the one yeah. chubby guy and got it on with the really good looking girl, but he had gone to the bathroom and wiped his ass and Oh out, that's what I remember of the movie. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> just kidding. But yes, uh you gotta really scroll back because that was that was a while ago. Thank you, uh Solus. Uh, appreciate it. I will be back real soon. Thank you, uh, the once and future badass returns. Uh later people Torque says. Uh, yeah, everybody who showed up, thank you guys very much. Um, yes. Saturday. Thank you for the questions. Yep. Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, I will be live doing a trivia night like I do every Saturday night. It will be Halloween Resurrection. Um, so 
come and have some fun for that movie. I, not not a great movie for a lot of you who are Halloween fans. Uh, or, or if you are a fan, you should like that one too. No, um, <laughs> but um, stop liking them after the first one. But but join me and Ted. Uh, we may have something else here this week too, but we'll see. We're going to talk about that. Uh, if not, we'll catch you next Tuesday. Um, so yeah, yeah, that that's it, man. Um, Zachary Hate, the zombies are my favorite. Um, what? Out of clear blue? Uh, a couple people jump back in, but we are ending the show. It's done. Um, yeah, uh, check out all the links below, man. Join my Patreon so I can do some more commentaries uh, for the few of you that are on there. And I would appreciate that. And um, until next week, you guys. We need money to buy masks so we can go to the mall. <laughs> Chili Billy in Pittsburgh. Uh, thanks for another great review. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, stay safe, you guys. Um, and we will see you next